Today, we are looking at the advancements in AI video creation. You've probably seen it all over the internet in the last week, lots of big YouTubers like MKBHD talking about it, but there has been some huge updates to how AI is generating video. And it's very impressive and it is very scary indeed for us filmmakers. Now it's not perfect, there's still a lot of issues with what it creates and mistakes that it makes, however it has advanced a huge amount in the last year and you just got to expect that in the next year or two it's going to advance so much more. It's already at a stage that could fool many people, especially in a casual glance on social media. So does that mean that filmmaking is dead from now on, if AI is just going to be able to produce such amazing results? How big of a threat is AI to filmmakers? That's what we're going to explore in this video. We're going to look at what it can do well and what I think is going to be most at risk from AI. We're also going to look at what areas that perhaps will be still okay. And we'll also consider some big picture stuff which kind of brings all this into context and perhaps why you shouldn't panic just yet. So who is facing the biggest threat when it comes to AI? What could AI do today or very soon based on what we're seeing coming out of OpenAI? MKBHD noted this in his video and I totally agree with him on this point and that is stock footage is probably the first thing that AI in the filmmaking world that's going to really be affected. If you're a stock footage filmmaker then I perhaps would be panicking right now because certainly AI could take a lot of your work just because of the nature of how it generates it, but also how people use stock footage as well. So when you think about stock footage and stock images as well and how it is used, you'll often just need something that's quite generic, something that could just be used anywhere. It doesn't always require something specific because if that's the case, you'd go out and actually get it shot. However, one of the big problems with stock footage currently is that, well, everyone else has got the same footage. If you look online, you often see the same footage being used across different places because there is ultimately a limited supply of really good stock footage out there. With AI, that arguably fixes that problem. It can create many different versions of a similar scene, which in the stock footage world is kind of perfect and that's what you really want when you're using stock footage. It also massively reduces the cost down as well. After all, you don't need to send a filmmaker out there to go and collect the shots. Right now, AI isn't good enough to replace true stock footage, but it is very close. I think that is definitely going to be the first thing to fall when it comes to the effect AI is going to have on filmmakers. Animation is also a big area that I think is going to be heavily affected by AI generation. It can already produce some really great results and it doesn't have the issues of trying to be ultra realistic that it's got to overcome. It doesn't have to worry about certain shadows and it doesn't have to worry about specular highlights and all the various little things that are big giveaways that it's AI generated. If you're doing some sort of typography uh, animation, for example, very popular in the corporate world, things like that, then AI can easily generate that already. Anything a bit more experimental as well. So often music videos, I think AI is gonna play a big part in the future. It would probably be a lot cheaper for someone to create the scenes or the animations to put into their music video using AI than it ever would be to create it from scratch with a real human being, whether that's actually filming out there or doing something within a computer. Luckily for now, performers and the performances will still need to be shot. So good news there if you're a music video producer, you're not quite redundant just yet. Now this all sounds quite scary and it sounds like if it can take over stock footage, if it can take over animation, it can take over many parts of a music video for example, then surely filmmaking is just one step away from disaster. We're going to have everything taken over very very soon. But I think we need to have a look at the bigger picture before we start truly panicking because AI, although very impressive, can't do everything. And when it can do, well, then we've got bigger problems to worry about. Now, something I saw in a comment section recently was the concern that why would a ad agency, for example, bother hiring a filmmaker if the AI can just generate everything they want in-house. After all, you'd save a fortune. The ad agency saves a huge amount of money, it saves a load of time, and they can just generate as many different versions of the wish of a scene without needing to spend loads of money. And that would be a big concern. That is definitely something that could be a problem in the future. 
But before you start panicking and thinking, oh man, ad agencies are not gonna bother hiring us anymore, there's actually much more to this. And that is, if that is possible, if the AI is actually good enough, it can produce such realistic, reliable, and repeatable results, which AI I think will personally struggle with, then if at that point it is that good, well, it can do a lot of other things as well. It can generate a complete ad campaign. It can come up with all the creative and ideas for how an ad should look. In fact, it could probably do multiple different versions all at once. So at that point, what's the point in the ad agency itself? If AI is that good that an ad agency doesn't need to use a filmmaker, then that means AI is that good that a client doesn't actually need to hire the ad agency in the first place. After all, that marketing department will just look at it and go, why don't we just use the AI software ourselves and just with a bit of simple text, we can generate our own commercials. In fact, we can generate multiple different versions. We can have ones that target individual specific people just using the data that we have on them. But then we have to think bigger again. And actually, if we don't need the filmmaker because AI can create the content just as easily in the computer as it would to go out and shoot it. So the ad agency doesn't need to employ us, but then the ad agency doesn't need to be employed because the marketing department, well, they can just use the AI to generate the whole campaign that they want to produce anyway. But then what about the marketing department? Are they needed either? After all, if you had an AI which is this good that can produce amazing results, this is what we're fearing in front of us, then surely the AI can also do many other things as well. In fact, I would argue that there's other areas of the business and other areas of industry which will be much more heavily affected by AI much sooner than filmmaking. Filmmaking still requires a certain level of skill that is quite unique and very difficult for computers to be able to do. That's why we're so impressed when they actually can do something that looks so good, because we're like, wow, that takes so much to be able to achieve that. Whereas there's a lot of things that AI already could probably do without the need of a human. I mean, look at admin tasks, look at accounting tasks, things that are very much yes or no answers. Well, all of those things in theory could all be done by AI already, which would then make the argument that it makes all those people redundant. So back to our marketing department, well, are they all redundant? Because after all, why do you need a whole team of people in-house spending a fortune on them just to produce your ad campaign where they have to read data, interpret it, and then figure out what they need to do for their marketing to get better sales? Well, if you don't need to do all of that because AI can do it from start to finish, that completely removes the need for that entire department. At this point, we're down to like the CEO running the company on their own. And even them, you'd have to start arguing that if AI has got that good, do we even need them anymore either? After all, the computer could probably figure out what is the most efficient way to run this business and doesn't need a human making those decisions. At this point, we've got no employees left in the business and well, businesses come to a standstill. So this is where I'm not so worried about the advancements of AI. Yes, it is gonna be a disruptor, but I don't believe it's going to be the disaster that a lot of people are talking about because at the end of the day, people just like working with people. There's just a human element to coming up with ideas and producing those ideas that people really love. Sometimes it's just down to the excuse of getting out for the day. You know, staff wanna go out and do stuff that isn't just them sat at a computer. And that is just the reality of things. Yes, if you looked at the hard numbers and you looked at pure capitalist way of looking things, then of course, doing AI all the way through, if possible, would be the way you would do it. But I just don't see us doing that anytime soon, not at least until AI is so good that it could remove all of our jobs completely. And that brings me on to the jobs that I think are safe from AI, at least for a good while yet. Yes, there are areas that will be taken over by AI. As I mentioned, I think stock footage is at high risk from the advancements that we're seeing. However, there are many areas that just require an actual filmmaker. And actually, this is a lot down to the fact that you have people that you want to capture on screen. Unique people. AI can imagine something. It can produce something that looks just as good as you could film it. However, it can't capture real moments. It can't capture uh, exact things. It is not any good at having any real strong control over it. That's an area that AI really struggles at. And for now, I don't see how generative AI is actually going to be able to solve those problems. Take weddings, for example. Filmmaking in weddings, I think, is gonna be a thing that will carry on for many, many more years. Of course, you could just get 
someone to shoot it on their phone, a friend to get shots on their phone, and it would be absolutely fine. The quality is there. But then that's been the case for the last 20, 30 years. Camcorders have always been around. The quality has always been good enough for the generation that they're currently in. So actually the need for professionals in these world has been, you could argue, redundant for many, many years. But still, people spend a lot on their wedding photography and their wedding filmmaking. It's because they love the quality, they love what a filmmaker brings to the wedding itself and the record of the day. It's much more than just being able to capture it, it's about capturing it in a unique way that only that filmmaker can do. In fact, I'd argue, if anything, wedding filmmaking is bigger than probably ever. In theory, it should have died off many years ago. In theory, if people just wanted their wedding day recorded, well, we've had that ability on a much cheaper scale. There's no need for these high-end expensive wedding films, but we're seeing that because of the advancements in technology, and I guess because of those reduced costs of that technology, we are seeing more and more weddings being produced at a very high quality by proper filmmakers out there for some very impressive budgets. The same goes for corporate videos as well. Yes, if you have a generic video that you would have used stock for anyway, then yes, that is gonna be overtaken by AIA. But that's no different than if you had used stock before. That was effectively taking jobs away from filmmakers that would have done that direct job for that client before. So I don't see the real difference there. But when it comes to things that require actually a manager of a department or whatever, so say maybe you're doing a tender video, for example, where the whole point of the video is effectively to introduce the staff members to their new client. Well, in that case, filmmaking and filmmakers are still going to need to be required to actually talk to the person, to get the best interview out of them, to get the quality. All those things are still required by an actual filmmaker. AI technology may assist with the editing process, it may assist even with the filming process, but it's not gonna completely remove the filmmaker from the process. The same applies as well to real estate or what I do, which is a lot of hotels and resorts. CGI has existed for many years in the resort world, for example. Yet despite that, we still go and shoot the interiors of hotels and resorts. Why do we do that? Even though the CGI is very impressive and they've already had it produced and they could get the perfect lighting, they could choose any angle they wish, they could move the props in any way they'd like. Well, to be honest, it's because they still need real images. The real images is what actually sells it to the customer. The customers don't trust CGI. They wanna see real images of the space that they're actually going to. The same applies to real estate as well. No AI knows what the interior of your house looks like if you were trying to sell it. So if you're trying to do a, a sales of your house and you wanna get a filmmaker in to produce something that looks professional, then of course that's the only way to achieve it. You're not gonna be able to do that with AI. So there you go, is it a threat? Yes, it is to some degree, but I wouldn't panic too much just yet. I think there's a long way off before AI will ever be good enough to really take over the jobs of filmmakers. It's 95% of the way there, but that last 5% is gonna take a very long time for them to really figure it all out. And as I've argued, I think at the point that AI is that good that it can produce a full film for anyone, exactly how they wish it, all fully generated with minimal effort, well, at that point, AI will be so good that it will be taking all of our jobs. So there will only even be the ad agency or the client to commission the work in the first place anyway. On that cheery note, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.